Let's get your top story now. And former Busasa CFO Andres Van Tonder will today continue his testimony at the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture. Now, his testimony followed that of former Busasa COO Angela Agritzi. Agritzi's testimony implicated a number of high profile people in alleged corrupt activity. Towards the end of his testimony, Agritzi admitted to being a racist. Now, let's recap this and other issues that emanated from the Commission. Our senior political reporter, Mzondi Lembecha, is in Park Town. So I thank you very much indeed, as always, for your time. Let's look at Agritzi's testimony yesterday. Allegations from an attempt to claim life insurance on a policy in his name to admitting that he was a racist. Startling, to say the least. Well, Blaine, um, as I did mention earlier in some instances, that uh, it was certainly not the best of days. Uh, for Angelo Akritzi at the witness stand yesterday, uh, given that uh, maybe it's, it has taken its toll, the fact that he'd been on the witness stand for nine days. And, uh, I mean, when he had said all that he had said, uh, some of those utterances really took everybody who was here by surprise. But I can just go back uh, a, a, a little bit, uh, Blaine, uh, when he was speaking about uh, the... The, the, the agreements, really, that they were trying to uh, draft together with the Watsons. I mean, here were the people who somehow had decided to part ways. But given the nature of how intertwined their lives were, it was difficult to let go of any. And uh, plain, I think they made it clear as well, uh, I think between themselves, I think in one of the trips, holiday trips that they had taken to, I think, to France, they had made it clear to say, guys, we needed to stand together because if any one of us falls, all of us will. So that is why I think uh, it was very difficult to, for, for these people really to go their separate ways, even when they had reached a point where you could see that they couldn't uh, work together. But perhaps more interesting plane was one of those meetings where they decided really that uh, they would draft an agreement uh, so to make sure that he keeps quiet, he doesn't spill the beans. But perhaps even more interesting, uh, he says in that meeting he was aware that uh, he was being recorded and uh, he still went on to utter those uh, utterances which uh, took everybody by surprise yesterday. I mean, even uh, admitting that uh, he was a racist, racist and of course uh, using the K-words. Let's take a listen, Blaine. I'm not finding excuses. Listen, I'm embarrassed of myself. I'm ashamed of myself for ever doing that. But please, just understand the context. No sleep. I was besides myself, and I'm not going to make excuses. You can even hear me slur. I haven't made an excuse about this. But once again, Chair, I am a racist. I agree. Judge me on that. It's fine. The two people... The two people that I refer to using the K-word is Johannes Kumedi and Papa Leshebane. Those are the two. And the reason for that is quite simply because I was wrong and there's no excuse. But you know, Chair, when people threaten you and the evidence hasn't been brought before you yet about the threats that were made to me, except for what I told you, but the transcripts aren't ready yet, or they haven't been presented. When people threaten you, you do you do, do stupid things. I'm not making excuses, Chair, but it was directed at them. It was in the privacy of my home, in my own privacy of my own home. Well, and I don't know about... Um, uh, what difference it makes if it's in the privacy of your home? Does it make a difference? Is one allowed? It doesn't. It is, doesn't. One, is the position that one is allowed, is not allowed to be racist outside one's house, but in one's house one is entitled to be racist? Chair, there's no excuse. Let me, let me leave it at that. There's no excuse whatsoever for what happened.
That's yes. why we're running a question of the day and we're asking our viewers, uh, does Angelo Agritzi's testimony and his racist rant uh, taint his testimony in any way at the commission? So we invite our viewers to uh, send their comments at the agenda underscore SABC. So the commission chair saying uh, with regards to the racist comments made by Agritzi, he said it was extremely offensive, totally unacceptable. But uh, that does not mean that he won't examine Agritzi's evidence and, and see where he was speaking the truth and where he may not be speaking the truth. So that was with regards to the racism issues. The media, uh, Mzwai, was once again in the spotlight again. The, the issue of the opportunity to respond to weekend newspaper reports by the Sunday Times came to the fore. Absolutely. And that's why earlier I said, um, I mean, Agritzi... Uh, may not have had a good day uh, at the witness stand yesterday because they also went back. Uh, I think uh, the previous days they had asked if um, Sunday Times had conducted him uh, when they wanted to write a story about him uh, selling his house. And then on the witness stand, under oath, he basically said he was not given a, an opportunity to respond. So... And then the Sunday Times, the plane, uh, wrote to the commission basically saying, no, they followed all the proper procedures and then they produced the evidence of the interaction between themselves and Akritzi. And uh, they put it to him again to say, uh, but the Sunday Times is basically saying has produced this evidence. Do you still stand by uh, what you said yesterday? So uh, I don't think he was really able to clarify himself on that one. So it did appear to take its toll, the fact that he'd been here for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, his answer really was, wasn't that clear. So you, you couldn't understand what actually he wanted to say. But uh, as, 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 as you have said, uh, the judge did say, uh, despite those offensive um, remarks, perhaps when it relates to uh, the, the, the racist language, so the judge would look at the evidence uh, in a manner in which it is, will be very fair. But here is uh, the catch for me, uh, Blaine. Mm. If some of the people who are implicated uh, decide to come here and dispute this evidence and put their own alternative versions and perhaps go as far as proving that uh, uh, this guy was a racist and then the manner in which we're interacting with him so was perhaps uh, indicative that uh, he didn't like us, I think the judge will really have uh, a very difficult time to really look at that kind of evidence. I mean, even uh, Mr. Pretorius, uh, he was basically saying uh, Mr. Agritzi, many people are saying you have decided to spill the beans now mm -hmm. because you are motivated by racism. So that is why I'm saying if some of the people will be brave enough to come and say, yes, indeed, it's true, and then they are able to prove that, mm -hmm. and then I think, by and large, some of the evidence then may be, may be discredited. But I don't think all of it, because, I mean, he was able to demonstrate in some instances that uh, whatever he was saying, yeah. so he could back it up with facts. But then let's move on to Andres Van Donner, uh, Blaine, uh, who was the CFO at Bosasa, who is now uh, on the witness stand. Um, basically what he was saying, or maybe to just uh, tell our viewers who this Andres Donner is, uh, this is the man uh, who took that video. Remember that mm. video mm -hmm. where Kevin Watson was shown counting all that money? So Andres Van Donner is the man who took that video. Basically, the reason why he did that, they say because Kevin Watson didn't want to sign anything. And then knowing that uh, the investigations and the hawks were following them, so they knew that they would be the only ones really implicated in this. Because Gavin Watson, they say, he just made it clear to say, I'm not signing anything, so whatever investigation that is happening, it has nothing to do with me. So they're saying they felt the need to demonstrate that everything that they were doing so they were doing under the instructions of uh, Kevin Watson. I mean, Mr. Van, St Van Donner is basically saying, even to this day, Blaine, he's very fearful of mm -hmm. uh, Kevin mm -hmm. Watson. So you can see it's um, 
It's a very interesting situation. Perhaps we can also use this opportunity, Blaine, to listen to what uh, Mr. Fantoner said yesterday. And you say that uh, he used... I was fearful of Gavin Watson, and I am still fearful of Gavin Watson. Um, Gavin Watson is connected to very powerful people, right up to the highest level in government. And many of those people actually visited the Bosasa head office and they were introduced to, 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 this, to some of the staff. And what had you seen in relation to the fate of senior people in the Basasa group? Well, I saw how Gavin Watson got rid of people who, who did his unlawful and corrupt, who participated, who did his unlawful and corrupt activities for him. Um, such as Mrs. Danny Mansell, Tony Perry, Angelo Grizzi, and even he even tried to get rid of Dr. Smith. He had meetings with me to discuss how we can, how we, how we should go about to get rid of Dr. Smith. Right. And you say that uh, he used these people. What do you mean by that? He used these people to do his corrupt and unlawful um, actions for him on his behalf. Now, the former Busasa CFO, Andres Fontana, will continue his testimony today. Uh, the evidence leader was basically yesterday dealing with an overview of Mr. Fontana's employment uh, relationships. But I'm sorry, to us, he looked very nervous on the stand. What was his demeanor like? Well, I don't know whether he looked nervous or he, he looked to me as somebody who is very withdrawn, uh, plain, mm. and uh, maybe it's because we are now used to uh, someone like uh, Akritzi who's a bit more theatrical, so a bit of drama. So when then someone is following him, I think uh, perhaps people would expect that he would also be as um, energetic as Akritzi, but he appears to be a bit more... Uh, withdrawn, uh, perhaps uh, not someone really who you can compare to uh, a great, but um, it would be interesting uh, to then continue listening to him when he now deals with uh, substantive issues. Uh, remember, Blaine, this was the CFO. So the CFO in any company is someone really who's responsible uh, for the financials of that company. But he did indicate at some stage to say um, they did have a fallout with uh, uh, Mr. Kevin Watson. So as a result, he then got sidelined. So he was not able to perform his duties as the CFO. So as he continues today with the evidence, uh, we, we expect to hear more. And perhaps we expect to hear uh, him maybe corroborating mm. uh, some of the statements that were uttered by uh, Mr. Akritz, remember Akritz was the COO and this one was the CFO, so necessarily uh, plain. These people were working very closely uh, together. Yeah. And of course, uh, Gavin Watson being the CEO, so it means these people were always, uh, most of the time, were together. So whatever they were doing, they must have been doing together. Yeah. And I think that's why uh, he was able to take that video that showed uh, Mr. Kevin Watson counting that cash. Is he being afforded the same security as uh, Mr. Agritzi? Well, um, not really in mm. terms of uh, the security that is visible, that is going with him, that is working with him. Mm. So he is, uh, I, I, I understand that uh, the commission obviously is giving him some sort of protection, but not to the extent of Mr. Agritz, um, who basically was the man very, very central in what Bosasa was doing. I mean, he basically was saying uh, in his evidence plain that uh, he was the right-hand man mm. of uh, Mr. Kevin Watson. So you can imagine. So if you are the right-hand man of the boss, 
most of the things will be done by you yeah. or even if it's not been done by you so wherever the boss goes in most of the times so you will be there so as uh, I think in terms of him giving this kind of evidence and the kind of people that he was meeting and uh, the threat to his life perhaps you can say uh, the security that he's getting is perhaps warranted but as far as Ms. the CFO is concerned so Mr. Anders van Donner, yes, uh, we expect him to say and cooperate a number of things, but perhaps not as uh, central as uh, Mr. Akrizi was, as Mr. Akrizi himself did tell us that he was the right-hand man, or Mr. Kevin Watson. And so I, just before I let you go, uh, I just want to get some clarity on something I, I thought I heard yesterday towards the end of the session. Uh, the uh, Justice, uh, Deputy Chief Justice was talking a bit about uh, the times. Uh, could we see uh, a change in times in terms of start and ending times of the commission? Well, the judge has made it very clear that uh, he wants uh, the oral um, hearings to be concluded by this year. So, and then he says to be able to achieve that, Blaine, so we will need to extend times. He is basically looking at us starting at 9 a.m. and finishing at 5 o'clock. Mm. So basically he's looking at the addition of two hours so that uh, the work of the commission could really be concluded in time. Yeah. And I think uh, this, Blaine, is informed by the fact that uh, I... The, the, the original um, uh, recommendation by the public protector basically spoke of about six months. But when the uh, Deputy Chief Justice was about to start uh, with his work, I think he looked at the enormity of the work. And of course, I think all South Africans can already see that uh, perhaps he was right. Yeah. He then approached the courts to say uh, the time that is allocated is too short. So then he went to the courts to seek an extension for... Uh, about 18 months, so which was going to then make the whole process uh, 24 months, that is, that is two years. Mm -hmm. And I think he's very careful to say, given that already he has sought an extension, so we can't afford to have another extension. So as a result, so if it's possible to put measures that will speed up the process, he would rather do it now. And I think that's why he has put it to the legal commission out there. Even yesterday, he was saying to them, I'm not saying uh, we are going to do it today or even yeah. tomorrow. I want you to reflect on it because the work of the commission must be concluded. At least the oral hearings must be concluded this year. So I suspect, uh, Blaine, that... Uh, Time and again, instead of finishing at four, perhaps would add your 20 minutes, your 30 minutes. Yeah. But perhaps next week, I think <laughs> we all start at nine and we finish at five. <laughs> it's going to be a busy week uh, next week, if that's the case. And so, Lina Mbeche, live for us in Parkton, Johannesburg, SABC political reporter. Thank you very much indeed, my friend. We'll catch up with you at about 10 o'clock.